way it works if you're the plaintiff. Well, I know that, but if you start off as defendant and you want to have a counterclaim, does it also work in divorce court? Yeah, if you're counterclaiming. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, you're okay. a plaintiff, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, well, okay. then it works. And that's what I ask. Yeah, but understand, what, it, what is your, the, primary, uh, the primary point in your counterclaim is you're challenging jurisdiction. jurisdiction. They have to prove that they have the jurisdiction. Right. Well, if it's a divorce court... I'll tell you frankly, it kind of sounds like they do. We already have it. You know. <coughs> okay, see, yeah, I don't think the microphone heard that. Oh. Or just repeat it. She says that the child support is federal. They can't, the state cannot enforce child support. Well, I would say, can't, can't the state enforce state child support laws? You say there aren't any? Bill, as far, as, as far as I know, the only ones that they issue licenses to in the state of California are citizens, mm -hmm. not yeah, sovereigns. People can have, have licenses, too. You just sign it. But oh, I guess you could say you're a citizen of the United States or a citizen. Yeah. That's, that's all they issued. You have, to, you have to claim to be a citizen and resident before they'll issue your license. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, people don't need licenses. No, they're above this, the, the government. They're above government law. They're not above common law. If you have an accident or something, you're going to be responsible, right? If, if it's your fault. Failure to yield right away or something like that. There's common law rules of the road. So anyway, this here is the... Um, what is this? Hold on a second here. Nope, we're okay, I guess. There we go. Okay, now let's go to transcript number two. All right. <clears throat> transcript number two is the transcript of what the judge said after he found out his order had been vacated. Okay? Now let me tell you, let me demonstrate to you what I think, what I think you think the judge did, how he reacted. It was something like this. But instead, he calmed down. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, here's the transcript. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <coughs> Bet you're wondering what this stick was for. Now you know. <laughs> All right. All right, so he calls the case. We'll skip over that. Now, uh, father of Mary Smith, the minor. Okay, all right. In this matter, it looks like to me that Mr. Jones filed... Uh, I think we resolved the difficulties from last, the last proceeding. Uh, an answer has been filed, and Mr. Jones filed some paperwork yesterday which was complaining about the proceedings that I conducted on February 18th. What I had to say, I don't feel there was any error. I respectfully disagree, but your paperwork is on file. You do see a difference, right? Okay. Okay, plaintiff says, very well, I'll take note of that for the record. <laughs> Judge says, uh, the big question is, the big question is, what are we doing at this point? <laughs> I read in there at some point, uh, are you asking, are you going to want to amend your complaint at some time? <laughs> Mr. Jones says, no. The only business before the court at this point today is making sure the defendant got the paperwork that was served yesterday. As far as uh, barring that, there's no business before the court today. The judge says, well... There's business in the sense that we need to push the matter towards a trial or whatever's going to happen on it. That's why today is a case management. Now, you got to understand in a case management, uh, this is a California procedure. I don't know if they do it in other states. They probably do. But basically, what they like to do is they like to, every once in a while, have the judge look at the case and see how things are progressing. 
And if you if one one party has a problem with another party, what are getting cooperation or whatever, the judge can then kind of step in and help fix things. But it all a case management conference is is a conference to manage the case. That's it. Not no decisions are made, only making little adjustments as necessary to smooth out the process. So that's what we have here as a case management conference. Still, this is an opportunity to find the plaintiff in contempt of court if he's wrong, right, in issuing those orders. Because, you know, it is kind of illegal to issue a bogus court order and pretend it's a real thing. It's, in fact, in California, it's a misdemeanor. Okay? So, see how the judge is reacting. Is this a bogus order or not that, that got issued, that writ of error? Okay, so, um, he says, um, that's why today is a case management, says the judge. Plaintiff says, well, that's taken care of in my paperwork. It's addressed and we're to move forward. The judge says, you want a continuance? I saw a date of September in there. And he says, well, there's nothing I could add to the paperwork to make it any more clear. It's pretty much all there. Okay. The judge says, well, and... Uh, Plaintiff says, well, barring that, as I said, all the business before the court is completed as of now. The judge says, well, do you want this case? I assume, Mr. Jones, and we've talked previously, but I assume you want this case to go to trial at some point. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want me to, do you want me to set a trial at this time? You see what's happening? Is the magistrate realizes he's a magistrate. He can't make a decision. He can suggest, he can cajole, he can ask, but he can't do the order. Okay? And that's what, you can see it in this conversation. Now, what's interesting is the attorney, the other attorney, doesn't have a clue. You know? Every attorney goes to school, he's taught the same thing. The judge is a 500-pound gorilla, and what do you give a 500-pound gorilla when he demands a banana? A banana and anything else he wants. Right. That's what they're taught in law school. Well, he's not a 500-pound gorilla relative to the 800-pound sovereign gorilla. Okay? So, now, so do you want me, do you want me to set a trial at this time? Joan says, no, I'm not asking for anything at this point in time. It's, well, the paperwork speak, speaks for it. The paperwork itself is explanatory. Okay, self-explanatory. It says everything I need to say at this point in time. There's nothing that I could say to clarify it any more than what it is. There's nothing I have to add at this, time in, at this point in time. Now, remember I told you earlier in the day that when you're in court, they do anything you want, you object. And we went through that scenario. You object. He says, why do you object? You say, that's not my wish. And then he says, if that's the best you can do, you're overruled. And you say, well, for the record, that's my objection. Okay? And so then he says, duly noted, and you move on to the next item of business. But <clears throat> if, if the judge asks you questions about your case, remember, you've done all the arguing in your paperwork. So don't fall into that trap of talking over it with a judge. What you tell the judge, it's all in the paperwork. Okay? And that's what, exactly what this guy did. Now, I want to tell you something. Behind the scenes, what happened here was that we prepared the paperwork and filed it in. Then the judge himself, uh, he's asking these questions. But before we got into that courtroom... I had a meeting with the plaintiff and, we, and I said to him, point blank, I said, why are you going to court? Okay? The plaintiff and I met in order to clarify his mind on the court, what, the court procedures. Why are you going to court? What's the point you're going to make? You've got to do that. The night before you go to court, you must sit down with somebody and explain exactly why you're going to court. And the reason is, is because when you get into court, you're not going to think effectively on your feet. So you have to preset, pre-channel your brain. And when you do that, you will say automatically the right things. And so you get into court, you talk about what's going on. Uh, I mean, you, you get with your friend, you talk about what's going on, what you're going to do. Get a clear sense of what your goal is, what you're going to accomplish, 
and any deviation from that you're going to object to. Okay? And that's exactly what he did here. There was some little discussion, okay? But, but when it came down to it, what do you want? It's in the paperwork. Okay? I'm not going to discuss it. Okay. Self-explanatory. It says everything I needed to say at this point in time. There's nothing that I could say to clarify it any more than what it is. There's nothing I have to add at this point in time. Judge says, okay. And Jones says, and that's where, and they're kind of over talking each other. He says, but Jones says, and that's where at this point in time we're done. And the judge says, and you're done? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> judge says, you want a case management conference scheduled for May 7th? will be reset to a date determined by the clerk no later than September 6th, unless for good cause. <coughs> so I'll give you another case management conference date. So the attorney says, is there some reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> the judge says, I... Well, it's all explained in his paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and the attorney says, well, I couldn't make heads or tails of it either, Your Honor. <laughs> The judge says, well, I've talked to Mr. Jones before and I told Mr. Jones that we have rules that he... Well, let me explain it this way. Nobody is forcing Mr. Jones to be here. He has voluntarily chosen this forum to litigate or bring his dispute for resolution to the courts of the state of California. He is not a defendant. Nobody is trying to take property from him. He's not charged with a criminal defense. He is here of his own free will to process his dispute, which is set forth in his complaint. I have advised him he will continue, I will continue to advise him. See, he's advising him, right? Okay. Not order, right. That he has selected and elected to be here and therefore he will have to follow the rules because he chose to be in this forum. He will have to follow the rules of the forum of the state of California. Well, now he's treading on thin ice again, see? Okay. Which includes the fast track rules, the California rules of court and so I've tried to make him aware of that. Now understand, he's talking to the opposing attorney. He is not ordering the, the sovereign plaintiff. Okay, that's how he's able to get away with that. Technically, he shouldn't be able to get, rid of, get away with that either, but we have a benevolent sovereign, yes. Should, you have, should he have objected? Should he have objected? No. Well, he could have, but it didn't make any difference. No. no we know who's boss. So, okay. Previously, we had a little dispute about that, I guess, but there's no dispute as far as I'm concerned. We have, we have a case. I'm willing to set the matter for a trial, Mr. Jones, because that's what you want. I mean, you want somebody, and Jones says, well, eventually we'll get there. Yes, sir. And the judge says, you want me to set a trial date today or put this matter, you want a further case managed? And Jones says, there are other matters in the paperwork that have to be accomplished before. And the judge says, he wants to file maybe an amended complaint or something, and there are rules that govern that, so you'll have to follow the properly notice, the notice procedures and, uh, and things like that. And the attorney says, I want to clarify, it's not the order? And the judge says, no, no, you know, and I'm going to allow him to do this, and I'm going to, you know, if he wants, you know, he, we had a dispute about the tape recording. If you properly come to me under Rule 980 of the California Rules of Court, and there's a procedure set forth in there that you can request to do that, but and Jones says, well, I was under, at that point in time, I was under previous interpretation of that rule. However, and the judge says, I'll direct you to that. And if there's a problem, I don't want to have, you know, I just want you to know that where I'm coming from. <laughs> I know where you're coming from. I've dealt with these problems and this type of, you know, I, I understand a bit where you're coming from. <laughs> I respectfully disagree to some extent, but that's okay. <laughs> Do you detect a difference from the other transcript? <laughs> But nobody's forcing you to be here, and so you're kind of, you're in the driver's chair as far as processing the lawsuit. Oh, and, Joan, and Joan says, I understand that. <laughs> the judge says, do you want to come back for a further case management? How about on a Friday in August or any day of the week in August? <laughs> Joan says, well, there's some other things I wish to accomplish that are listed in the paperwork, and at that point in time, I'll move forward. All right, you want to come back, you pick a day in August. Well, I have no date in mind at this time. Okay, can I pick one? I'm going to pick a date <laughs> that you have to come back. He says, well, he says, that's the way it runs, Mr. Jones. He says, very well. 
That's the way it runs, the judge says. So Jones says, however, I will object for the record. See, he was a little lost too. He shouldn't have objected. He should have just fine, you know. <laughs> the points were made, weren't they? <laughs> okay. Okay, the judge says, that will be in compliance with the fast track rules and I will, I will set it for dismissal. And when, you don't, and when you don't show up for that, your case gets dismissed. And Jones says, as I said, and the judge says, that's the rules. You Well, now you know. You volunteered to be here so the system can voluntarily on its own throw you out of here. It's your choice. I mean... I'm not here to argue with you today. And Jones says, well, I'm not here to argue today either. The paperwork explained my process, the direction I'm going, and there's nothing else I can say. Okay, further case management, Monday, August 16th, 8.30, this department, 666. I asked that the defendant give notice, <laughs> written notice, okay? And the, and the reporter says, yes. Jones says, thank you very much. Uh, the attorney says, that date again? And the, judge, the judge says, August the 16th, 830, 1999, 8.30 a.m., this department. The attorney says, okay, am I correct in that the court made no ruling on this apparent request to amend the complaint today? Uh, the judge says, well, I've made no rulings. I've made well, what I've done. The record, <laughs> the record speaks for itself. <laughs> and, and notice this. It doesn't matter what the judge says. The attorney says, thank you, Your Honor. See? They always say thank you. Tomorrow I'm going to cut your, your, your attorney head off. Okay? Thank you, Your Honor. That's what they do, right? There it is. So that was the transcript. Did you notice a difference? Of course you did. So, all right? So... Then what happened was the plaintiff put together the first amended action and then the judge came along to the clerk and said to the clerk, told the clerk to put in a request to the court to have the, action, the first amended action rejected. The clerk then did that, the judge received it, and then ruled on it to be rejected. So that's what eventually left, led to the contempt of court citation against the judge. So, but the supervising clerk who filed that, that certificate and order vacating documents, look what she said on it. We have an actual... Uh, quote of it. So the green lettering denotes information entered on a preprinted form. So you have the black is the preprinted form and then the green part is what got written in by hand. Okay. I, the county clerk and ex officio clerk of the Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Calamity, do hereby certify that the first amended action of trespass and trespass on the case which was filed on demand was filed in the above entitled action on June 7, 1999, that the documents was or were filed in error as the court directed said clerk to reject the above document as there is no leave of court or stipulation from the other party to file a first amended complaint. See, she says it right there. The court directed her to do this. That was a smart clerk. She kept her... She, it was a CYA. Then the judge came along Pursuant to the certificate of the clerk and good cause appearing, it is hereby ordered that the First Amendment action of trespass and trespass on the case be hereby vacated. So she was ordered to put this in. She put it in, and then the court, the judge, ordered it thrown back out. Well, he obviously forgot his lessons. So, what we did, transcript number three. Now, you have to understand that we couldn't read the signature. So we didn't know exactly who signed it. Of course, we had a pretty good idea, you know. But still, we didn't have that positive, total 100% proof. So what we did, <clears throat> transcript number three, uh, a hearing was held. Let's see, there were certain admissions. We'll go to transcript three. Here's the Superior Court again. Jones versus Smith. 
good morning, all this stuff. Low shark net for the defendant. That was an attorney. Okay? Okay, so they respond, they call the counter, okay. So the judge says, uh, all right, this, this is here on, I don't know what this is. I just don't accept paperwork, Mr. Jones. And attorney, the Jones says, well, it's pertinent, Your Honor, in a future issue. Okay, it'll be placed in the file. Did you get a copy of it? I think what he did is he actually manually gave the judge some paperwork relating to this contempt. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> did you get a copy of it? Mr. Jones says, not yet, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused myself who's who and what's doing. But anyway, he says, you're required to serve him before I can accept it. We have it right here. It can be served right now, he says. Well, serve him with it. Thank you. Now we'll place it in the file. <laughs> okay, so Jones handed it over to the attorney. All right. Judge says, okay, what do you want to do today? Do you want to set a trial date? Jones, not at this point in time. There are some administrative procedural issues that have arisen that I need to do before proceeding. I'll, I'll do forthcoming. However, there are a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Judge says, well, let me remind you again, I can't give you legal advice. I indicated that the last, I indicated that the last several occasions, that I, some of the questions I may be able to answer, some I can't. Okay, very well. Could you give me your full name, Your Honor? My full name? Yes, please. You can look it up. Roy Stephen Legume, or Legume. Roy Stephen Legume. Does everybody know what a legume is? A vegetable. Yes, what kind of vegetable? A bean. Roy Bean. No, Judge Roy Bean was the hanging judge of the Wild West. Yeah. Okay. No, we just made it up. The names were, ch the names were changed to protect the guilty, remember? Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> this was Judge Roy Legume. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so, um, so he repeats it. Mr. Jones says, Roy Stephen Legume. The, the judge says, Stephen with a PH. Thank you very much. I use my middle initial though. Mr. Jones says, do you, have, do you or anyone you know of at this time have a claim against me? The judge says, a claim against you, me or anybody? I don't know what you're doing here. What we do, playing 20 questions? <laughs> Mr. Jones says, these are questions I need to proceed on with the procedural administration issue. Now, I have no claim against you, Mr. Jones. I didn't know who you were until you walked in this court as a plaintiff. Okay, very well, thank you. And uh, can you, do you know whose name is signed on this? And he shows them that, that certificate, you know, the order. That. And the judge says, well, that's mine. That's your name? Very well, thank you very much. Judge says, that's why I vacated, well, the clerk erroneously filed your first amended cause of action. You did not ask for leave of court to do that. You have to do that or get a stipulation with the other side agreeing. And Jones says, I understand that. But maybe they'll agree, says the judge. But I vacated the order because the clerk erroneously did that. Mr. Jones says, yes, for the record, I wish to enter an objection. That's all I have to handle at this time other than setting a new trial conference, uh, trial readiness conference date. Judge says, when would you like to do that, sir? Sixty days would be fine with me. Let me, and the judge says, well, let me hear from the other side. And the attorney says, well, as far as we're concerned, we have a motion pending to compel a deposition on the 30th. After the deposition, we're ready to go with trial or arbitration as the court sees fit. Now, by the way, speaking of depositions, <clears throat> whenever you do a common law lawsuit, You've got to provide all the evidence up front, okay? All the paperwork, all the medical paperwork, whatever it is, if you have evidence, you provide it right up front. That, that gets served right, right with your lawsuit. When you have a common law lawsuit, there is no such thing as discovery. Why? Because there's nothing to discover. You've served it all. You can tell them to go fly a kite. The only remedy that a defendant has if you, provide, if you refuse to provide the evidence, the only remedy he has is to make a motion in limine asking the court to block out all the evidence. 
that not all the evidence, to block out the evidence that has not been presented to avoid trial by surprise. So that's his only remedy. Well, in a common law suit, you've provided all the evidence. You don't care if they block everything afterwards. There's nothing more to present. Okay? They don't understand that. And they go through all sorts of gyrations because you won't cooperate. <laughs> Which is fine. Runs up their costs. Okay? Remember, lawsuits, as I said, it's civilized warfare. I've said it's psychological warfare. It's also a war of attrition. Run their costs up. The higher, the better. Okay? At some point, they're going to decide maybe it's not worth it. Maybe they ought to settle with you. Okay. So, continue on. Uh, as far as we're concerned, says the attorney, we have a motion pending to compel deposition on the 30th. After the deposition, we're ready to go with trial or arbitration as the court sees fit. The judge says, well, Mr. Jones wants another case management conference, and he, well, maybe the other side will agree you can file your first amended complaint. Mr. Jones says, sorry, uh, could you speak up a little bit? Sure, I said Mr. Jones wants a continuance of the case management conference, and so I'm going to do that because he may want to file a motion to file his first amended cause of action, or he may want to see if you'll agree that he can file it. I don't know, but that's the way these things are done. If you want to do that, I don't know if you still want to do that. But there are some other matters apparently relating to the depositions and stuff, so I don't know what that's all about. But Judge Simmons will be hearing it. And yeah, that had to do with deposition stuff. So that was a separate thing, which I did not include in the file. But, okay. Anyway, the rest of it is kind of uh, normal stuff. I mean, the judge basically is getting back to thinking he's in charge. So let's see. Um, we'll go down a ways here. Um, they settle. They, they get a new date, new hearing date, and so forth. So the whole purpose, what was the goal? Yes, so. It's getting warm. I guess the whole goal of today's hearing from the plaintiff's point of view was to get absolute proof who signed that order. Okay? And we got the admission, right? Okay. Now, we go to the next thing, which is the order sealing of papers. Now, we had this little problem. We did not want the opposition to see all of our strategy. We didn't really want them to fully appreciate the strength of, of the sovereign. And we had a little problem with the judge. Well, now, the judge is not a defendant. He's not a party to the action. He's kind of offline. So, we invoked, by sovereign prerogative, we invoked uh, one of the code's provisions that says that all meetings must be public except meetings that deal with health issues, you know, personal health of people. Your, your, your medical records are private. And the other thing is personnel issues. In other words, when, when there's a meeting to decide how to discipline a public employee by a public supervisor, that meeting is private. That can be private. They're, they're permitted to have those private meetings. So... What we did is we, we took the position that the judge is a public employee and we have a disciplinary problem. And because of that, we could operate on this issue in secret. And so we put in an order sealing the papers. See? All right, now what we did was the top sheet contained only the who versus who ver information, the normal caption. There was no text on the first page. We took the remainder of the case and a copy of the first page and put it inside an envelope and we put the first page outside the envelope and filed it that way. Okay? So it was sealed. 